guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to be going over a really helpful trick that I learned while studying a certain style that I think really cracks the code on how to understand Sonic designs. This can apply to more than just Sonic though, it can go to any character. If you have any favorite video game characters outside of the franchise, this would be a helpful trick to learn how to draw them. But I'm going to be applying my knowledge of Junio Sonic to all designs of Sonic, and then I'm going to be going over how I draw Junio. I've learned a lot since my first video. I think I draw him a little bit more faithfully than I used to, and I just want to share that knowledge with you all. So each of these designs is unique in their own way and represents Sonic a little bit differently. But what makes them different? What exactly is changing, particularly in their face, that instantly makes them all a little bit different? It's a term that I've come up with that I'll explain further. It's called facial real estate. Now I know what you're thinking. It's free. And it is. It's totally free. Check out this free hint. So facial real estate is the term I've come up with to describe the amount of space that Sonic's eyes, face, nose, and mouth take up on any shape. Now at a glance, these are all pretty similar. And you may be thinking, well, I don't see any difference at all. But surprisingly, facial real estate on Sonic makes a huge difference. So let's take Jam for example. I see a lot of people trying to draw Jam like this. And you're like, okay, well that's not that bad. What's wrong with it, Jazz? But let's pay attention to a couple of key things. First, the size of the muzzle in each design is very different. This is way thicker than this is. Pay close attention to how far apart the ears are from the eyes, the top of the eyes. In Junio Sonic, it's very, very short. In other Sonics, it's, oh, it's about the same. But notice that in Junio Sonic, it's almost at the top of his head, and in OVA Sonic, it's like almost jutting into half of his skull. It's almost like right here. So this is what I'm talking about facial real estate. Basically, I'm thinking of how is the circle of his head being taken up? What features go where? How are they used? Again, here, the gap is actually a bit larger because the mask doesn't come as high as on Junio, and his ears go up here, near the top of the skull, similar to Junio, but they're a little bit smaller. Now Jam, and this is what I think people miss a lot, Jam has a very large forehead. The gap between his the top of his eyes and his ears is large. It's not just the shape of everything, it's the proportions of things, and particularly getting the proportions of Sonic's face right all it takes is a little bit of examination. In fact, if there's a certain style or any character from any franchise you want to learn how to do, I highly recommend you bring them into a painting program or print them out and trace over them and find their basic shapes. Don't trace over them like this. This doesn't teach you anything. Trace over them and think, okay, I'm gonna do this curve here. How big is this curve? What typically is the length here, right? Is this like five meters? Is this five inches, right? How long does it take to, the, to, to get to the end of a Tootsie Pop, so to speak, okay? Like we're trying to figure out mysteries here about character design. Let's approach Jam again with this, with this thinking, okay? I'm gonna draw a circle. And if I just wanna mimic this face, I'm already going to make a line where the top of his eyes are. So his eyes are not gonna go past, basically my rule is for Jam, his eyes don't go past halfway of his head. So you wanna, you basically wanna squish all of Sonic's features between this and this. And then his ears go about right here. When an experienced artist draws a 2D shape, it is a representation of a 3D form. So, Whenever Sonic is drawn, we are imagining that his head is occupying this 3D space here. Now let's imagine it goes around, a couple of axes for the sphere. Now, why does this matter? Well, if you like to imagine Sonic's face as a sphere, it helps break up his features a little bit more easily. So we can cut his face basically in half, and now we know the line for his muzzle does not go past his ears. So if you think of your jawline, your jawline ends where your ears begin. And that's how I like to treat Sonic's muzzle. The muzzle does not go past where his ears begin. So if I just start halfway up circle, I can just place his ears on his head like this. 
And now I know that his eyes are not going to go past the halfway point on his head. Okay. So his muzzle has to go between here and here. Actually, I think it, I made his ears a bit too big. I'm just going to clean these up just a little bit. They might be a bit, a bit big. And again, I, I'm not going for perfection here, but I am going to show you how easily you can adjust your accuracy of your design if you're trying to mimic something simply by examining the proportions. And maybe it goes just, just barely past the halfway point on his face. And the distance between his, his muzzle and his eyes, this is another landmark that I look for. And then Jam's face also kind of comes up and just swoops right into his muzzle. I just like to imagine Sonic rolling down. He's got very, very large eyes. See, I already made another mistake because his eyes actually go a little bit farther out as well. They go to the length of the muzzle as well, and I didn't do that. I'm just gonna make that adjustment real quick. I think that's pretty close. At a glance, I think everyone can tell what it is I'm going for. Not perfect, but this is a good start. Okay, so that's Jam Sonic. Let's take a look at Junio Sonic real quick. Some big takeaways that I've learned since the original video. His face regularly breaks the contour of the circle of his head. You can see this right here. In fact, if Sonic is looking right at you and can basically shave off corners like that, it's not a perfect circle. Like most other Sonic designs conform to this very circular, almost perfect circle. But Junio is a little bit more angular the muzzle does not go past his ears. Now, I wouldn't draw his ears this way. I would actually draw them almost on the line of his face like this, because I think that's what we see in the majority of the Junio anims. But the length of his muzzle does not go past the ears. You can almost trace the line that goes up and around. Here's another example, if I just draw it real quick. And his eyes, remember we're talking about that facial real estate, his eyes go all the way up here. And this is just a quick study. I might have made his eyes a little too big, he doesn't look scared enough. You can see, it doesn't take very long to try and copy an image. You have a reference, and you understand the proportions a little bit. Obviously I have quite a bit of experience drawing Junio Sonic, a lot actually. But just the principles of facial real estate and where the eyes begin and a couple of land markers between the eyes and the ears, the brow and the muzzle, there's a lot to understand. And again, this doesn't just apply to Sonic characters. Every character design is doing this and thinking about this. And when people are given reference sheets, if you're on a team or working with other people or you want other people to emulate your design, you should be thinking about this too. You need to be thinking about landmarks, you need to be thinking about the general shape of things, proportion of things. It can't be random, they need to be thought out a little bit. So let's do some Junio Sonic sketches. I want to make something very clear. The reason I no longer call him Toei Sonic, even though I sometimes still do by accident, is because Hisashi Iguchi, the chief key animator on the Sonic CD anims, pictured here, expressed on Twitter that he was surprised people in America called it Toei Sonic. He went on to say that Studio Junio were the ones who did all of the hard work for animation, so essentially it wasn't Toei who even animated them. I was under the impression that Hisashi Iguchi was contracted to help with the work, and Toei was the one who ended up doing the majority of it. it turns out Toei probably contracted out to Studio Junio since they had worked previously together on stuff like Dragon Ball, and Studio Junio were the ones that worked for four months with low wages, his words, not mine. So I only think it's right that we give the respect, credit, and admiration to him and his studio and not to Toei because it doesn't seem like they were involved in much capacity other than producing it, which is not the same thing as animating it. But from here on out, I'm calling him Junio Sonic. Okay, with that explanation out of the way, I'm going to be drawing a couple drawings of him and I'll be doing full body stuff, so you can see my general process and how I do that. I like to do little ellipses for the inside of his gloves. You could choose to do cylinders, but sometimes I like to just go straight into the gloves. 
The way that I like to think about his shoes, make almost like an S curve. I like to do a little indent for his stripe because in Junio Sonic they seem to be an actual strap, not just a color on his shoe. It's kind of like this shape. It goes in, I come back in, it goes down, around, and it does that. That's how I typically think of his shoes. The straps are good landmarks, I think, for easily drawing his shoes. His belly is typically pointed downward. Most Sonics typically have the belly upward like this, or sometimes right in the middle. Junio likes to be a little bit down tilted. So I think I've already made most of his features too big. I think if you, you can tell right away. I'm just gonna keep going with it until I'm done and make any adjustments as necessary. I think his ears are always at the top of his head, the very top. Notice that Junio Sonic's ears are a little bit blunt. They're just a little bit shorter, not as sharp, not as tall. And if we look at the landmark right here where his spikes meet, I'm gonna say that's like right about here. And where the other spike meets is right about here. A lot of Junio spikes go like this. And then when they're fully erect, they go like this. I like to imagine Studio Junio had the wherewithal, the creativity to think when Sonic is in a reduced speed state, or when he's in a low energy state, his spikes are relaxed, and when he gets emotional, he gets serious, he gets angry, his spikes jet up. So we'll go from this to this. This bottom spike is always just a little bit smaller. Okay, now his eyes. This is another one that people usually get incorrect. Junio Sonic has limited facial real estate. There's tall distance between the top of his muzzle and his eyes. Right side is just, just a tad bit lower. His eyes conform to the shape of his head because they're kind of basically glued to his face. Our eyes look the same, but they don't really behave the same because our eyes essentially have like a glass ball in front of it, and then there's like a huge hole, which is what our pupil is. It's a giant hole that receives light. It's the same principle. His nose connects right into his eye, so I'm looking at that connection. So it's pretty close, but I think I did goof up on the proportions, and an easy way to solve that would be to either make the head bigger, I think that would basically solve it. Let's do one more. Not enough room so I can draw the whole thing, so I'm just gonna draw a line. Let's say these are the tips of his feet. So in my mind, I'm mentally drawing over this length and this length, and I'm thinking, how long are these? This leg is a little bit longer because it's going out into perspective. Then his arm is actually on the top of his body. And the way that you can think of the gloves is like this. Basically, it's two cylinders on top of each other. And so, whichever direction the glove is facing, that's the direction the line's gonna be. So if you're looking at it from the bottom, the lines will be here. And if you're looking at it from the top, the lines are gonna be here, here.
Now, I love hands, man. I've learned a lot studying these hands. I, I think in love drawing. I know a lot of people, especially young artists, are very scared of hands because they're very, very tough. They are. Don't beat yourself up about it. Hands are very complicated. You never stop learning. No, I've never heard a pro say, yeah, yeah, I've got hands down. Don't worry about it. Right. Hands? Hand, I'm good. The hands are done. Oh, obviously, some have very good grasp on it, but no pun intended. I mean, at this point, it's almost muscle memory. I've done so many frames for freedom. They're very, very Looney Tune-esque. I was watching Bugs Bunny the other day and realized in a lot of poses, Bugs Bunny's hands are basically the same. They're very cool to look at, but if you were to draw human hands, have real joints, have this hyper-stylized look to the anatomy. majority of his face in this one is taken up by his muzzle, so I'm just going to draw a line. I think the muzzle is going to end and begin, and just throw the ear on top right here. This circle really strong because this is a strong circular face right here till it gets up to the eye and then it juts up again like a little mound where his nose sits that's how I, that's how I like to think about it it's just a little resting place for his nose to make contact made his face a little too small I knew that the remake of this tutorial was coming and I just wanted to be sure that I covered the right things and I think I did in this video. I covered the things that I wanted to talk about that I've learned. Anyways, thanks again for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and we'll catch you again in the next video when I talk about how to draw Amy. Hopefully that's the next video. Happy 4th of July.